Welcome everyone to Ladder Daily Digest. I have decided to run a series called One Minute Mormon Stories. Today we have Backyard Professor helping me out. Thanks, Backyard Professor. My good pleasure. Thank you. So hair day. In August, John DeLynn has a birthday and it's coming up this week. And it's on, we'll say Tuesday. And he's going to be 55. And also starting next month is, is we're going to be in the 20th year of Mormon Stories podcast. And we're all grateful. So first of all, happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. Yes. Don't make us sing happy birthday to you, please. That's right. Thanks for all your work. Thanks for all you do. And, and hopefully this series works out to get a couple more views to all your um, videos. You promised me on your on our episode with you that you wanted me to get to 10,000 subscribers. And so this is a way I'm going to keep on putting your name out there until I get to 10,000 subscribers. Backyard Professor is helping me out today. We're talking about Dr. Michael Coe. Ooh. So Dr. Coe did an episode that was very impactful to Carrie. And so, Carrie, go ahead and read this one-minute story on this episode. Gladly. This is episode 905, The LIDAR Response to John Sorensen. In this episode of the Mormon Stories podcast, host John DeLynn interviews Dr. Michael Coe, an expert in Mesoamerican archaeology and anthropology. Dr. Coe discusses the advancements in LIDAR technology and its impact on archaeological research, particularly in uncovering ancient civilizations in Mesoamerica and Cambodia. He explains how LIDAR works by using laser beams to create detailed topographical maps, revealing previously unknown structures and cities hidden beneath dense vegetation. Dr. Coe also addresses the claims made by some LDS scholars that LIDAR findings support the historical accuracy of the Book of Mormon. He provides a critical analysis of these claims, emphasizing the importance of scientific evidence and the need for careful interpretation of archaeological data. Throughout the interview, Dr. Coe shares his extensive knowledge and experience, offering valuable insights into the field of archaeology and the ongoing quest to understand ancient civilizations. Okay, so that's a one-minute um, representation of this episode. And so here's Dr. Michael Coe. Carrie, you saw this episode, mm -hmm. and what what did you get from it? From it's actually a series. We're doing part one, but we can talk about the whole series. What did it mean to you? Yeah, I uh, number one, I've read a lot of Michael Coe's books. I know through the years, um, he has. It's not like he's an enemy to the Mormons, but he just says archaeologically, they're just no fit in Mesoamerica. And John Sorensen attempted to, well, he spent his career producing what scholarship would call parallels between Mesoamerica and the Book of Mormon. And so Sorensen was attempting to show the cultures had matches. Michael Coe just would not be convinced because the matches are either too superficial. Uh, they certainly fall within the purview of just simply mere coincidence. And they have no stick to itiveness is how I put it. Uh, Dr. Coe is, was a world renowned scholar. It's very nice though, that he was friends with the LDS scholarship on the Book of Mormon. Uh, he was more than happy to talk with them about it, but Mesoamerica is looking in the wrong spot. Now, that doesn't mean that Coe believed the Book of Mormon happened somewhere, but Mesoamerica, no, it did not happen there. That was his main emphasis. Right. And you, as a, a church apologist, we'll say not church apologist, but as an independent apologist, you worked with uh, people that, at FAIR for a little while. Yeah. And you, you were always looking for little hits here and there, whatever, whatever it was you can take. And yeah. there was something about all the misses that he talked about that just overwhelmed you, I, I assume. Yeah. Uh, 
his, his materials, what I would do is what Kerry Mulstein does with the Book of Abraham. Any Anything I could find that actually could become a, quote, hit, I used entirely ignoring his context. And that's that's cheating, plain and simple. That That is not a valid methodology. Now, I know Hugh Nibley argued against the scholarly methodology, but if you don't use a good methodology, you cannot arrive at proper conclusions. So it'd be almost like if you didn't use a scholarly approach to creating an automobile, you would have a hard time producing an automobile that would probably either A, work, or that people would trust to drive it. Or that would go for 250,000 miles like my Toyota Camry. There you go. Stuff like yeah, that. For Sponsored real. by Toyota Camry. Hopefully uh, they'll they pay me some money there. for this plug. Could we contact them? That's right. We'll, we'll get him on. We'll get him on the gravy train. Well, right? The thing I liked about Co is he really wasn't. I, I mean, he never really even wrote uh, books against uh, the LDS apologists. He just simply didn't pay that much attention unless they put it out to him and either asked him, "Well, we have this. Why isn't this valid?" Or if they were getting to obnoxious with him, although his clout was such that they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't really uh, be obnoxious with Dr. Coe any more than they could with Dr. Rittner. They just, they simply couldn't. So Yeah. And, and these scholars are not interested in being obnoxious toward Mormons or Mormon <laughs> scholars. They're just trying to say, look, this is what the evidence says. And yeah. So yeah. What, what happened in Mesoamerica? Who were these people? That's what Coe wanted to know. And yeah. who they weren't were Nephites and Lamanites. What so, their what their culture, what their uh, politics, even their warfare, uh, did not come because in, in the manner that the Book of Mormon described. Now there could be an odd coincidence of a particular choice of a weapon or a particular war strategy, etc. But as an overarching in total cultural Book of Mormon view of Mesoamerica that simply cannot be found there. That's right. So we recommend everyone who wants to know more about uh, Dr. Coe and his episode on archaeology and LIDAR. It's an interesting use of it. And here he's relatively seasoned, you know, at the time of the recordings. I think he's passed on by now, right? Yeah, he is. And and I do want to personally say thank you, John, for having him on as a uh, living history. Oh, man, I'm telling you what, that was one of the superb supreme episodes of all of YouTube, in my opinion. I, I'm so grateful to John for having him on as a guest and I am grateful to Michael Coe for being the scholar he was and letting a Mormon slash former Mormon interview him about a subject that really wasn't important to him, but he wasn't disparaging it either. He, I suspect he just kind of did it because he was a nice guy. And as they got into it, Co would oh no yeah no that doesn't work no 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 it's not there it's not there so, so yeah. you're saying even if more the purpose of Mormonism relied on unicorns and we said look unicorns were in Central America he would just politely come on even though it would seem ridiculous to everybody else and explain why there's no evidence for unicorns we'll we'll say yes yeah those were armadillos not unicorns that's there how off the evidence would have been. Yeah. yeah. Horned arm armadillos that are very rare to find. The horns were made out of hair and so they would dissolve. And so there's no, no rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> Which technically can be known as a unicorn across the other side of the world. That's right. And and I'm being a little facetious, but I, I just mean to the to non-Mormons, that is sort of what Mormon archaeology seems like to them. It'd be like trying to discover Santa Claus at the North Pole. Let's do an expedition and try to discover something that 
everyone now knows Santa Claus, most everybody over 12, we'll say, knows that Santa oh, yeah. Claus doesn't really exist in the North Pole. No, and that's there's no true. evidence for it. He, right? No, that's not true. He's very real. He ate my cookies and drank my glass of milk. <laughs> I've got the evidence Santa Claus was real. There you no, go. The interesting thing about uh, about all of this also is the uh, the Mormons themselves are not unified on this subject of Book of Mormon geography, as, as the majority of us know by now. But isn't it remarkable that the church refuses to take a stance in order to avoid contention? And so it's left it up to the scholars. And this is where John DeLynn is absolutely invaluable because he gets the scholars' points of view, both pro and con. Uh, Michael Coe just fundamentally demonstrates Mesoamerica is not it. And the Heartlanders were very, very happy about that interview or, or unhappy about that interview. And the Mesoamericans, of course, they tried to, they tried to uh, downgrade it and say, well, Cole was biased or whatever. They, they all, that's what we did at FAIR. We would attack the scholar, not his ideas on arguments. The fundamental problem with it is lack of evidence. And so the main thing, John has preserved this in interview form and, and people can go and, and watch it. And John would like to say again, thanks for everything. Happy birthday this week. Happy birthday. And we'll be here for you. And we will also show more shows, more episodes throughout this week, maybe even till Christmas. I don't know. Depends yep. on Love you, man. Love you. Stuff. Keep producing. There you go. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Sharing is important for the algorithm. It helps more people see the information. All right. Bye-bye. See ya.